Hello everyone, how are you today? It's Kei. So uh, this is 22nd of December and this is a video session. It's not a live stream because I have to be outside and I can't make it for today's live stream. So uh, I will, I am recording a video and talk about how you can integrate Ichimoku basics. Ichimoku basics in five lines and wave theory and time theory and price theory all together because I found one of the good examples on the market so that's why I decided to talk about because um, I have been talking about the market trend directions and entry chance and exit timings and risk management and psychology management which are very important topic but uh, I realized that recently I haven't really talked about the time and price theories and wave theory also so uh, that's why this time I decided to talk about uh, these topics so that you can apply uh, this uh, Ichimoku strategies holistically on this uh, market altogether. So uh, yeah, let me change the screen. All right, and so um, a quick disclaimer as usual uh, this content is basically based on my own experience so when you take trades please do at your own risk right and uh, this video is uh, by the way recorded at uh, this time and worldwide it's in UTC it's at 12 48 right now and here in Dubai it's 4 4 48 p.m. in Dubai time so you can have Los Angeles New York London in Dubai, New Delhi, Singapore, Tokyo, and UTC time zones here. So this basically, this video is recorded at this time on the 22nd of December. So this is on Wednesday today. So um, let me turn to trading view. And uh, so first, let me talk about the um, Ichimoku five lines. So whenever I see charts, I first look at the daily chart during the week and see which way it's going and simply when the daily or the forward chart is ranging i kind of stay away i stay away for a couple of hours uh, and come back to the chart within the day again but uh, today since this is purely about the ichimoku uh, original teaching and strategies i won't do that so uh, this is on the daily chart and simply i look at i will talk about the daily chart only because back then when Gochi Hosoda was talking about the Ichimoku, he was only using examples on daily chart or the weekly or even monthly chart. But he didn't go lower time frames because back then there was no PC. So, um, you know, uh, there was no way to be able to see these lower time frame charts back then. So actually I have the Ichimoku original book here. Let me enlarge the screen just in case. And uh, so here, this is the cover of the Ichimoku book. And uh, this is the Ichimoku book itself. So I have been reading this book many, many times. Actually, I have five books of Ichimoku, which is available in public. And this is just one of them. But uh, every time I read, I learn something new. So uh, I have been reading maybe more than 25 times already. Because I have been, you know, studying it. And uh, I was backtesting myself also with these strategies. But uh, every time I read, I learn something new. So that's how deep these books are. But uh, this is a book and in the book, there is only like uh, letters and words. But uh, the chart, there is no charts in the book. And charts are actually attached with the book. So with that book, there are one, two and three. Four and five and six so there are six um, charts attached to it and I can't see I can't show you the inside because this is copyright but uh, you know inside there is a handwriting of Goichi Hosoda's chart with Ichimoku five lines and uh, these are the handwritings oh, of course these are copies these are not the original uh, handwriting but these are the copies of his handwritings but uh, you know whenever I read the book I he talks about one of the markets in the book and uh, he refers to one of these charts so every time I study I go back and forth between book and charts and uh, try to 
understand what he's trying to say. So that's a little bit of a story of how the original book looks like and how I study with, through the original book. And I thought it's fun, so I just wanted to share this one with you first. So anyways, um, so here is pound AUD daily chart. So if you look at the Kumo now, well, actually, you have to see the price first. Sorry, you have to see the price first and where the price is located right now. And right now, the price itself is right here. And hold on, let me zoom in like this. And you can see the price is above the Kumo, above the Tenkan Sen, but below the Kijun Sen. And the market has been ranging for the last four days. So when you see this chart, you know that this is ranging market. And usually I say to stay away. And also, if you look at the Chikou Span, Chikou Span is also touching. So this is range market, and this is through the original teaching. So in terms of the time cycles, um, if you capture time cycles, what you can know is uh, you will know that the next potential Henkabi. Henkabi is the uh, day of change in English. Henka means a change and day. Uh, henka means change and B means day in Japanese. So basically, Henka B means changing date or day will change in English. So by using time cycles, you can capture the potential future Henka B. Um, and that Henka B could be the reversal or the acceleration of the trend. So Henka B actually has two meanings. It can be reversal or acceleration of the trend so let me show you time cycles on this pound AUD first so I have the time cycle folder here in the trading view so I just put it here and let me squeeze the chart so that you can see the time cycles like this way okay so so this is time cycles so basically how we can capture time cycle is is that you simply take the swing highs and swing lows and manually count the number of candles between the swing highs and swing lows. And sometimes you see the similar or the same number of candles in between. So in this case, the, f the first here, starting from the 20th of August, the market went down and it went down all the way to uh, 3rd of September. And this was 11 bars. 11 trading days, uh, it was the downtrend. And to the next uptrend, to the next Henkabi, uh, it's the 20th of September. So it lasted uptrend until the 20th of September, and it was 12 bars. So let me just write here, 12, in case this uh, number is too small for you. So 11 and 12 is very close, just one candlestick difference. So you can call this as a um, Taito Suchi number in Japanese. Taito means equal and Suchi means number. So basically, this is an equal number time cycle. So after you capture the similar or equal a time cycle number, then you look at the candlestick formations and see if this was either V wave or I wave or N wave. So simply I wave is the market just straight down or up without any retracement. These are called I wave. And the V wave is like when the, if the market goes up and down like this, or uh, let's say the market goes up and down like this. These are V waves, typically speaking. Actually, there are uh, some other V wave formations, but these are the basic V waves. And N wave is, let's say, if it's bearish in the wave, the market goes bearish and up and breaks the support and goes down. This is bearish in the wave. If it's bullish in the wave, it becomes up and down and then breaks the resistance and goes up. So this is the bullish in the wave. So after you capture time cycles, um, you want to see whether it's a V wave or I wave or N wave. It must be either one of these. So. In this example, if you can see here, uh, 11 bars first downtrend, there are no retracements. It went straight down. Let me delete this uh, 
uh, line here. So it went all the way down without any retracement. So this was I wave. First it was I wave bearish, and then the next 12 bars it was also I wave. So the first it was I wave, and then bullish I wave, bearish I wave, and bullish I wave. And as a whole, it became V wave. You see? So 11 bar, 12 bars, it was V wave. And what happened afterwards was that the market has been trending down all the way until the 2nd of November. And if you kept time cycles in between this, um, in this case, I capture time cycles as uh, swing lows. So counting from the 3rd of September low, this uh, the market continuously went down. After the Kumo breakout, of course, the market went all the way down to the 2nd of November, which was here. And in between, there were 43 bars. 43 bars is actually very close to the Hon Suchi number. Actually, 42 is a Kihon Suchi and 43 is just one candlestick difference, which is acceptable. So you can see the similar another time cycle with a Kihon Suchi number here. So Kihon Suchi is the basic numbers, the series of numbers uh, of Ichimoku, which are 9, 17, 26, and 32, sorry, 33, and then 42. And then the ne next one is 51. So this a series of numbers are called Kihon Suchi number and market sometimes react by these Kihon Suchi numbers in the highs and lows. And this is example, so on the swing lows, you see 43 bars. And once again, only one or two candlestick difference is acceptable for the time cycle. So that's why I actually uh, have this uh, 43 bars label here. So. And as a whole, it became reverse in wave. It became reversed in wave from 20th of August, bearish I wave, and then bullish I wave. And after that, there were some pushbacks and pullbacks. So I would say this, this was two consecutive bearish in waves. Or if you take this one also, it was like a three consecutive reverse in waves. And the market went all the way down to the 2nd of November. So this is actually called Sandan structure in, in Ichimoku. Sandan is also a set of trend. So and when you see Sandan, it's considered to be the end of the trend. But uh, you can see the example here. But uh, yeah, so in this case, anyways, the market went down and up and then went down all the way. 2nd of November, so it was downtrend. So let's say you take the sell according to my strategy or according to Ichimoku strategy. If you take the sell at the Kumo breakout, you saw that there was a Sanyaku Gyakuten signal and assuming that you took the sell after the Kumo breakout and then you keep holding and holding but you don't know until when you want to hold. But if you know time cycles and if you could capture the potential next Henkabi, which is about 2nd of November, then you can leave chart until this date. And around 2nd of November, 1st November, you come back the chart, and when you see reversal, then you can just exit. You can just look for an exit time. So this is how you can actually apply the time cycles in your day-to-day -day analysis. Time cycle really captures uh, roughly when the market turns or roughly when the market accelerates a trend direction. So in this case, it was reversal. So if you see, let's say, the Tenkan Sen break, you could exit here too and make some profit if, uh, after the Kumo breakout in this case. So this is combining the wave analysis and time cycle along with the five lines of Ichimoku. So yeah, so, uh, so that's the time cycles, right? And then you can apply the price theory. The price theory is also a Ichimoku strategy, and it captures the potential target on the N formations. So in price theory, 
you take let's say this is a point and this is b and this is c and if you know the knowledge of the price theory uh, you can kind of capture the d target roughly what price the market will go farther down and in this example to make the long story, long story short it was actually the v target so if you just captured this uh, downtrend v target is actually if you take this uh the pips between c to b you take the pips between c to b and you extend the same pips below the b point and then that's the d target so 2nd of November, you can see that the market actually stopped the downtrend and it was very close to the V target. So if you knew about the price theory, uh, roughly on this day, you could expect the market continuously go down. So if the, if the market touches the V target, then you can exit there. You can set the type TP over there and exit automatically or simply when the market reverses, then you can exit there too. But uh, Ichimoku is all about forecasting like this. Uh, of course, Ichimoku is not 100%. Sometimes, you know, time cycles, uh, Ichimoku uh, uh, time cycle uh, sometimes doesn't work. If the market doesn't respect, sometimes it goes like off from the time cycles or price theories. In that case, you simply add the lines like a support level resistance levels and you have to think where to exit manually but uh, at the same time you can apply this Ichimoku theory and capture roughly until when the market will continuously go down in this case so this was the previous chart and of course in the previous chart we see the result already so uh, we can talk about anything but here is application to the future market how you can forecast the future market in this same pair pound AUD. So let me show you the example about that for now. So let me cancel the price theory again and talk about the future time cycles from here. So today is the 22nd of December and the candlestick is located in here. And first of all, I, you have to look at the market situation. So right now, once again, the market is above the Kumo, above Tenkan Sen, but below Kijun Sen and the Chikou Span touching. So basically, this is ranging. So from here, we can't really tell which way it will go. That's the first condition. And if the market reverses and goes back into the Kumo, then I don't recommend you to trade afterwards. But in case the market goes up and breaks the resistance, then you can follow the time cycles and you may be able to actually capture target by this price theory. So let me step by step talk about this area first. So uh, if you look at this uh, price uh, market uh, wave analysis, so uh, counting from here the 2nd of November, if you only look at the wave formations, up to the 3rd of December, it was bullish. You can see consecutive end waves. This was 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and roughly 5 end waves. And it went all the way up here. And since 3rd of December, the market retraced back down. And it actually broke Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, and be supported by this Senko Span B on the 8th of December. And now looks like it's going up slightly. So this is this is actually called ascending P wave. Hold on, let me uh, zoom in the chart. So you see the lows are higher, but the highs resistance remain the same level roughly. And this is called ascending P wave. And when you see this, most likely the market breaks bullish this way. Uh, which I'm also expecting. So if the market breaks resistance and also when the market comes above the Kijun Sen, then I'm planning to look for the buying edge. But uh, expecting that the market breaks the P wave upwards in this way, and then that becomes bullish in the wave as a whole. This becomes like a bullish in the N wave. If the market breaks a P wave and also breaks a resistance, 
then it becomes like this uh, bullish in the wave, like this way. And if the market becomes bullish in the wave, then how far it could go up can be captured by the price theory. And roughly when the market will reach to the top can be captured by time cycles. So I already have the time cycles here. So previously, it was 27 bars from low to actually swing low. So I'm actually talking about this uh, the low on the 2nd of November until the 8th of December. So this was, if you see the level here, it was 27 bars. So let me write it out here, bigger, so that you can see it clearly. So 27. So uh, 26 is actually one of the uh, Kihon Suchi numbers, and 27 is just one kind of difference, which is acceptable for this time cycle, Kihon Suchi number. So, so now that we know that there is a 27 bars in between, so we can expect the next swing low could be marked on the 13th of January. 13th January could be the next Henkabi for the swing low. So let's say the market breaks the resistance and goes up this way. Let's see. Sorry, sorry about my poor handwriting. Let me redo. So um, yeah, let's say the market breaks the resistance bullish, and then at some point the market will, you know, reverse, and this date, 13th of January, could be the pushback, and the market may continuously go up in this direction. So because this is swing low time cycles, so you can see the pattern like this in the market. So every time I see time cycles like this, I see that this, this is like the breath of the market, like inhale and exhale, the breath of the market is captured by time cycles like this way. So the next potential swing low could be marked on the 13th of January. And the next potential high could be marked when is a question. But so in this case, there is a um, the swing high here. And if you look look back the chart, there are a couple of swing highs in the daily chart. But uh, I would say that these are relatively minor swing highs. So the previous swing high, if you can if you can capture, is actually this one the 20th of September. So, 20th of September, if I just uh, capture this uh, time cycle, from the 20s, uh, from this, uh, yeah, 20th of September, all the way to the swing high, the 3rd of December, it was 55 bars, 55. So, 55 is actually not the Kihon Suchi number, but, uh, this number may repeat as a swing high. So if that repeats, then the next swing high could be uh, like this. So 55 could be uh, the 17th of February. Yeah, so 17th of February could be the swing high. Okay, so uh, in this case, the market may go up. And if it breaks resistance, then there will be push, pullback and pushback. And then the market will grow up to that level on the 17th of February. So this scenario can be expected. But uh, in case the market doesn't break the resistance, then still it may have a pushback on the 13th of January and continuously goes up to until the 17th of February. Uh, so that will be the second scenario, like this. But uh, we may see bearish. We may see bearish from here, like this. There, this might be the pullback, and then the market may continuously go down this way too. So, but right now we can't tell which way it's going because the Kumo flat Kijun Sen is also, uh, you know, uh, above candles and Chikospan touching. So we can't really tell. But in case the market goes up after this. So let's say you take a buy, you take a buy for any reasons or you take the buy after this ascending P wave breakout, then 
you can expect how far the market goes up until the 17th of February by these time cycles and also price theories. So here is a price theory. Let me open that. Okay, so price theory is captured like this. So let me just move this label to here. Because this is a potential swing high. Okay, so um, yeah, hold on. Let me just move this one also. Okay, so uh, I have already calculated this uh, each target. So price theory actually has E target and V target, and N target and NT target. So in this example, if the market continuously goes up, breaks this uh, first ascending P wave and breaks it goes up and then the market let's say breaks this resistance and then pushback may happen on the 13th of January and continuously goes up this way in that case on the 17th of February we can expect the market will reach to either N or V or E targets so NT, as for NT target, this is below the resistance and if the market lands on NT, that doesn't become a N wave. So in this case, we can't use NT target. But instead, we just focus on the N or V or E targets. So let's say the market goes up this way and uh, as, you, as you see, the market grows up, up like this and then uh, it may reach N target. This... Uh, on the uh, 17th of February or it could go up to V target or it could reach up to the E target and with that actually scenarios in mind you monitor chart along the way and by the time the market reaches either N or V or E target the, the market should be above the Kumo and it should also be above the Kijun Sen uh, or in between Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen and Chikou Span could be above the candles also but with this scenario you monitor the chart so this is how you can combine integrate these Ichimoku 5 lines and time cycles and the wave and also the price theories um, so I will just keep these lines for our future reference and see how it plays out if it doesn't happen then uh, we can actually capture new time cycles if it's let's say if, if the market starts to go down this way then we can still capture new time cycles by capturing these swing highs and swing lows and we may be also able to uh, get the potential target on this bearish trend afterwards but right now we can't tell which way it's going so this is just one of the scenarios for this future uptrend but since we see there is a potential end wave we can already capture these targets like this but sometimes there is no trends there is no potential end wave in that case you won't be able to use the price theories like this you may be all only used to be able to use time cycles or waves and five lines but you may not be able to use the price theories like this way so uh examples would be uh let's say pound cad uh, if you look at the pound CAD daily chart, the market is about to break the Kumo now. It is breaking the Kumo now. But if you look at the time cycles right now, um, so I have captured time cycles. So the this is from in between the swing high to low, it was 20 bars, 20 bars. And from this uh, swing low to low, it was also 20. So we see some pattern 20. In 20 we see a pattern of the market and then to the next swing low it was also the 20 bars so we see 20 20 and 20 for the swing lows so the next potential low could be marked 20 days after after the um, uh, the 8th of December so that is actually the 4th of January could be the next potential pushback and then it may go up this way because we see this pattern, so it could repeat in the future like this way. 
And in terms of the swing highs or swing lows, I mean, uh, we see that there was a, I think I forgot to put one vertical line here. So in terms of the swing highs counting from the 20th of September, um, it was actually the swing high was 26th of October and then 30th of November. And it was 27 cycle and 26 cycle. So 26 is actually one of the Kihon Suchi numbers in Ichimoku. So the next potential high could be marked 26 bars after the 30th of November, which is going to be also on the 4th of January. So in this case, the 4th of January, we know that that might be the Henkabi, but uh, we never know if that will be the pushback or it could be the pullback and the market may go down this way. In this case, we can't use time cycles because uh, we don't see end wave in this formation. So this is an example of where you cannot use the price theory. However, let's say the market uh, retraced backwards. Let's say the market will be resisted by this single span B and retraced backwards afterwards. And then if you see pushback like this, then in this case, you can capture, you can use the price theory to get the targets. But so far, we only see I wave and there is no pullback. So we can't uh, capture time cycles. I know so we can capture, sorry, the price theory because we don't see any pullback. So in order to capture a uh, price target, we have to have point A and point B and point C. So in this case, we don't see point C yet, so we can't use the price target theory in this case. But uh, yeah, these are the examples of uh, time cycles and price theory, which I haven't really talked about recently. And that's why I decided to talk about this topic today. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video session. So uh, yeah, so uh, looks like we are getting closer to the holidays. So market may lose its volatility. So uh, usually after the holiday, let's, so let's say next week, uh, you know, could be very slow market. So I think for this year, we only have this week for the trading opportunities. But hopefully, you can capture some nice pips and have a great Merry Christmas and great year end New Year. Happy New Year. All right, so once again, thank you for joining and thank you for watching this video till the end. If you liked it, please press the like button. And if you are more interested in the Ichimoku basics or Ichimoku strategies, then you can always welcome to join my Ichimoku community. If you see the join button on YouTube, that's how you can join. So uh, I will be seeing you soon. And until then, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay old. All right, bye for now. Matane. Thank you.